In this video, we're going to look at the basics of the Antenna Network and Measurement Simulator, invoked here. The simulator is an ICON-based Vector 2 port cascade with series and parallel branches. Each icon represents a single element. Some of the elements are distributed and some of the elements are special function. All of the elements have help files which display the nature of the element when it's dragged. This is the ideal sphere for RCS standard for a given diameter. All the dimensions in the simulator are those units signified in the path loss module. Now let's go ahead and clear the schematic pad and we will load a standard simulation schematic. The standard simulation schematics range from the last schematic that was present when the program was exited through various applications. Standard great gain transfer is a useful schematic. In this schematic, we'll shake this port just to get a description of it. In this schematic, <coughs> the VNA or, or the measuring instrument is described by its power level, the ambient temperature, the measurement bandwidth, and the impedance level. If we wish to examine measurements with different source and load impedances, we can change the impedances right at the, v, at the uh, port. Here we have a reference antenna. It uses reference data and for that data to be present, the import reference antenna button should be green, meaning the data is present. If a positive sign is used, then the reference data is cascaded immediately. If a minus sign is used, the reference data is de-embedded from the cascade up to this point. So this enables a simulation of a network measurement by using plus signs or de-embedding both the path in the reference antenna. The antenna measurement normally is stored in a register. In this case, I'm specifying register 1. I'm calling it my Yagi and I'm specifying that the measurement was S21. I could just as easily move the measurement icon into place and this icon will at this point of cascade invoke the measurement on the measurement page of any of the measurement parameters and any of the cuts with the present settings. This will enable a user to make adjustments and simply reanalyze and also to add or de-embed known parasitics and other things. An important feature is the ability to arrange the icons yourself. Each time the program is exit by returning to the main measurement menu, the simulator is reset. 
and invoking the simulator, followed by one tap of the clear, will bring up the previous icons, positions, or in this case, just the schematic. So in the load file, there is a last schematic a file which is constantly updated upon exiting the program. If I wish to invoke a parallel element, then I would drag the series counterpart and specify rotate. And I immediately have a ro rotated element. If I have large branches and large cascades, I can always output them to a register in part and then cascade the registers together. There are several special function icons. In this case, the rotation icon applies the rotation matrix to an ASL measurement and also an offset phase user specified. The default is the, the data must be present in reg 1, but any reg can be used. The translation icon allows physical translation off the measurement axis in units of path loss. The default path loss units for the dams is meters and so I could specify one meter in the X direction, one meter in the Y direction, etc. But one has to be careful not to get too close to the path reference uh, leading that w which would lead to a uh, very high uh, field values. Next, I have the option to save the existing icons schematic to the disk. And once I do that, I will always have a record of that particular schematic. The monitor plot option can be very powerful when dealing with engineering problems. In the monitor plot, the state of reg 0 is the data plotted. The as L data set is specified by the movement of the sliders as is the data being used to process a complex arithmetic. I'm going to go ahead and load the dipole data in the C DAMS advanced data directory dipole.dat and I'm going to recall a previously processed gain set from reg 4. Immediately it goes into reg 0 and we see that we have a measured gain pattern. If the measurement was a vector measurement we can also view the phase. Invoking phase we see the phase in one, minus 180 to plus 180 degrees cyclic. We can also view the same data in a polar plot. In this case we have a Smith plot, now we have a polar plot. We can connect the lines and get an idea of how the phase changes. If we place a marker on any one data point, we see the frequency, and in the case of reflection, 
we see the reflection coefficient. In this case, it's the gain, 1.189 at 148 degrees. Next, I'm going to go ahead and load a standard Wi-Fi filter. And we see that the filter consists of five ideal coupled line sections. The sections are described by angle and center frequency, by coupling in dB and impedance level. So the coupling line is 10 dB at 50 ohms into a 22 dB coupled line at 50 ohms. And finally, a center line of 24 dB at 50 ohms and the reverse on the way out. It's centered at 2.4 gigahertz, so we're going to just go ahead and calculate the S21 of this coupled line section. Recall that Reg0 contains the same frequency array as is shown on the plot. That frequency array is applied to the simulator schematics. As the simulator makes progress through the cascade, each individual icon description is displayed along with the progress bars is also the individual progress bar, the blue. And we see that this filter is very nicely designed at 2.4 gigahertz. And what we're going to do is take Reg0 and store it into Reg2. And then we're going to perform a new cascade with the antenna data in Reg4 and the filter in Reg2. So we change the Reg designation from Reg2 to Reg4. And so we're going to cascade the antenna gain with the Wi-Fi filter. And we're going to extend the plot limits to minus 100 dB. And here we see the gain of the antenna and the loss of the filter. If we were interested in noise analysis, then we could drop the filter power to a low power level, minus 30 dB, and we could increase the noise figure of the VNA to 20 dB and recalculate the cascade response. And here we see the noise level specified at ni minus 98 dBm and just beginning to impact the filter response. So in this way, we can simulate a real-world measurement system. Next, I'm going to go to the scientific calculator and I'm going to invoke MAX 
and the azimuth elevation sliders will be sent to the max positions for the measurement and the corresponding display will be shown in the plot. I'm going to go ahead and invoke .s1p to export this data as linear data in S21. And we see that the standard .s1p file is created. Next, I'm going to invoke plot hold, and I'm going to plot all of the azimuth contours. And this gives me an idea of what the antenna filter combination will do over all azimuth and frequency. Next, I'm going to recall the alter alternate parameter, which was the measured dipole match. When I recall, recall alternate parameter, I see the measurement in dB, or I can specify linear, and I see on the Smith chart the actual phase and magnitude of the mismatch. If I place a marker on a data element, the frequency and the magnitude of that reflection are displayed. Also, the narrow band matching elements are displayed. If I move up into the capacitive section, capacitive elements are displayed. So I'm going to put position the marker at 2.4 gigahertz and the display is telling me that 37 ohms and 2.9 nanohenry inductor is required for narrowband match. Because 37 is closer to 50 than 91 is, I'm going to select the series inductor. I'll go ahead and clear the schematic workspace and I'll pull my port 1 out and I'll pull my register out and my alternate parameter register data is stored in register 3 and it's S11 data. I'm going to go ahead and cascade that back to my calculated gain data in register 4 and then I'm going to output to reg 0. I will select the series inductor and give it a value of 2.97 nanohenries. And I'm going to go ahead and invoke hold on the plot and I'm going to calculate the new S11. And here we see that the match is exceeds minus 20 dB. So in this particular case, a very easy matching technique has been employed. If we go ahead and we then calculate S21, we can calculate the new system gain. And the new gain is now centered at 2.4 gigahertz. If we specify reg register 2, which was the system gain and the Wi-Fi filter, then we expect our gain level to follow the filter skirts. and it does. 
I hope this video has been helpful. This concludes this basic introduction 